The furnace behind me is 33 years old. I was but a wee little two-year-old lad when it was installed, and the world was still marveling over the technological prowess that is the Nintendo Game Boy. And everyone was still carrying around pogs in their fanny packs. These machines are extremely ancient in tech years, and home heating has changed a lot in the past few decades. My house has two furnaces and two air conditioners, and due to extremely old age, they are slowly puttering out of existence. And today they're going to be replaced with far more futuristic Daikin inverter heat pumps. Since the heat pump is moving around heat instead of creating heat, they are four times more efficient than say an electric radiator or a gas burning furnace which means they are far cheaper to run in both the summer and the winter. Huge thanks to Daikin and my local utility, Rocky Mountain Power, for sponsoring this video. I'm installing a Daikin dual fuel heat pump upstairs and a completely electric air handling system in the basement. To remove the old system, I first need to pull out and recycle the R22 refrigerant from my previous old school air conditioner. This stuff is out of date and only boils at negative 41 degrees Fahrenheit. So the refrigerant for this old unit is back inside of this bottle. After the refrigerant is reclaimed from this machine, they're gonna take it and recycle them. There's a bunch of copper and aluminum. These can both be scrapped and recycled like normal. The new heat pumps will be able to heat and cool my house using a new refrigerant called 410A, which has a boiling point of negative 55 degrees Fahrenheit, and uh, just keep that in mind for later. Pulling out my old gas burning furnaces was pretty interesting. The blower and combustion portion at the bottom did all the warming of the house, and the pyramid radiator looking evaporator thing was connected to the outside air conditioner just for cooling. The new system looks very similar, except for that instead of the air conditioner part only flowing one direction and having one speed, these variable speed inverter heat pumps flow both directions, getting hot and cold, and I'll explain why that's cool, or warm. With the furnace removed from my upstairs, we can see how it works. This is where the gas line comes in and blows fire inside the furnace. The fire goes into this heat exchanger, which you can see the tubes carry the flame and the fumes from the flame, the gases, through this. And then there's a secondary blower here that shoots it up through a vent on my roof. And then over here is the larger blower, which pushes air up through these fins, collecting the heat from the fins and warming up my house. With my old furnace, this was the exhaust. You can kind of see the residual dirt and stuff from the, the burning fuel. And this is the entry point. So the fuel and all the burning happens right here and there's plenty of holes where those fumes can still escape out into the house. You'll see in a second that the new dual fuel heat pump fixes this issue by having the intake and exhaust sealed up with something called a concentric kit. So none of the burning fumes can ever find their way into the house. All the air from in the house will come up through here and shoot out. And then all the fresh air from outside will come in through here and go back in. The metal stands help keep the heat pump elevated so air can keep flowing through the system even if there's a lot of snow on the ground. Instead of lighting something on fire to warm a house, these heat pumps harness the energy of phase change, liquid to vapor to liquid again to warm and cool a building. The most basic law of thermodynamics is that heat always goes from hot to cold. Ice melts, pizza cools down, and even our own sun in a few billion years is going to fizzle out, leaving Earth to circle the giant void of nothingness all by itself for eternity. Anyway, let's say I want to heat my house in the middle of winter when snow is all over the ground. You might think that there is no heat outside to be harvested, but since the copper lines we're installing carry the 410A refrigerant, which boils at negative 55 degrees, these machines are still able to efficiently do their jobs even when the outside temperature is down to negative 10. Some heat pumps can function at even lower temperatures than that, but I live in Utah and not the North Pole. The liquid refrigerant travels outside into the frigid air and boils, turning into a vapor while collecting heat energy during that phase change. To us, winter weather feels blisteringly cold, but to 410A refrigerant, winter weather feels like a frying pan, vaporizing it instantaneously. <laughs> 
Then the variable speed compressor pressurizes the vapor to make it even hotter, and it flows through the copper lines to the condenser inside of my house, where blown air from my vents passes over it. The refrigerant warms up that air while losing its heat and turning back into a liquid, where it repeats the whole process all over again in a closed loop. Steam carries more heat energy than liquid does, just like liquid carries more heat energy than ice. So we have the intake, the blower, the furnace, the evaporator coil for the AC. And the actual furnace component where it's burning the fuel has its own intake and its own exhaust. But this intake and this exhaust are not connected with the house air. They're fully going up through the roof into the concentric kit. And in theory, once we install the new heat pump furnace, we won't need this exhaust vent, which is carrying the hot fumes out through the roof. It'll be a much cleaner setup. There you now, go. Now it breaks. Yep. Gotta love it. We're able to move captured heat from outside my house to inside my house by manipulating the refrigerant phase changes. If we want to cool down the house, we just flip the direction of that refrigerant so that it vaporizes inside the house, capturing heat from the circulating air and transports it outside instead. A heat pump does get less efficient the colder outside it gets though, and here in Utah, winter temperatures can dip into the negative teens, which is why my furnace upstairs is dual fuel, burning gas on the few days where it gets extra cold, supplementing the heat pump. And the same thing goes for the larger air handler in the basement. The electric heating strips can kick on during the few nights of the winter when the outside temperatures drop below negative 10. You can see the directional airflow on the back. The air is going to pass through the warm coils, which then heats up the house without using gas. Remember though, these heat strips only turn on in emergencies or when the temperature outside drops below negative 10 degrees. Because the heat pumps outside are so much more efficient than these wires and we prefer to use those. We aren't burning any fuel to make heat, we're just moving heat around with a compressor and electricity. All thanks to the phase changes and the super low boiling point of 410A. Refrigerators and air conditioners both use the same science, but usually just in one direction. I've been using this setup for about two months now, all through a super cold December and January, and the biggest difference that I've seen between these heat pumps and my old gas-powered furnace is that the Daikin heat pumps basically trickle heat into my house consistently, where the gas-powered furnace would blast air into my house periodically. That took a bit of getting used to, that the heat pumps just run more often, constantly moving air throughout my house. I mean, they're quiet on the outside, but my previous furnace would just blast air into my house in large doses. It's just different ways of doing it. And that's also part of the efficiency thing. A slow and steady walk is more efficient than powerful bursts. With heat pumps being so much more efficient than anything else out there, there are a lot of government incentives and state rebates that help with the installation costs. And there are even some federal rebates on a national level that can offer up to $8,000 off new heat pump systems for qualifying homes. And since they are always constantly changing, my local utility, Rocky Mountain Power, has a list of them on their website that they keep updated. I'll leave a link for that down in the description. And I went with Daikin heat pumps because they've been around for almost 100 years and are the number one global brand for air conditioning and have a 12-year warranty. So if you hit that subscribe button, we can check back in another 30 years to see how these hold up to the test of time. Thanks a ton for watching, and I'll see you around.